got my pencils. I'm ready to draw. So let's let the magic begin. I've got my pencils. I'm ready to draw. So let's let the magic begin. Welcome, friends. Let's grab a pencil and we'll draw again. We'll make some magic and it all begins right here. Hi everybody and welcome to today's show. You know, sometimes you don't always have to draw on a white piece of drawing paper or a big drawing board. Sometimes you can find something really unique to draw on. Today, we're gonna draw on a weathered piece of parchment. In fact, we're gonna draw a cool castle on a piece of parchment. So let me show you how we can make a cool piece of parchment right now. The first thing I like to do is take a new sheet of watercolor paper, any size you wish, and tear the edges with my fingers. Now this helps to create a torn and tattered look after the colors are laid down, making the parchment look even more ancient. After I've torn the edges, it's time to begin laying down the paint. I like to use a fairly large brush and quick drying acrylic paints. To create the weathered yellow brown texture of old parchment, I like to combine yellow, brown, tan, autumn gold, burnt umbers, and any shade of orange. Now I don't need a mixing palette. I dip the brush into whatever color combinations I want and dab them right onto the paper. This creates a really cool rainbow and marbling effect and allows my acrylics to mix right there on the paper. The coolest thing about doing this part is each and every piece of parchment I paint is different than the last and just as exciting. Sometimes some really wonderful things pour out of that brush. Once the entire page is covered with thick paint and a lot of water, I like to take a handful of paper towels or sponge and press it against the paper. I don't want to smear the paint in water, just lightly dab it. The effect here is amazing. The thick paint and water are absorbed from the paper, leaving behind a soft and smoothly blended piece of parchment. Now, don't worry if your page begins to roll or warp. This is due to the heavy amount of watery paints we've placed on the paper. Just weigh down the four corners and let it dry flat overnight. 
and there you have it. That's how easy making a piece of parchment can be. Now I made another piece for the show today and I've got it on the drawing board. Well, let's go and draw a really cool detailed castle right now. I have got TJ's blue number two, TJ's magic black, which is a 6B, and the magic wand today. And of course, we're going to use the magic of the drawing with the finger as well. Now I've got a cool little castle tower here drawn and a little ravine. So let's see how much detail we can add in our amount of time here, starting with the number two pencil on this tower right here. Drawing the conical top. Remember, it's just a, a basic geometric cone. That's all that is. Now let's add a gray base. See how neat that looks on parchment? It looks weathered while we're drawing it. And the cool thing about this acrylic based piece of parchment, watch how nicely things blend. Look at that. It's almost like painting on there with the magic wand. It feels really, really cool. You can hear it. A neat little surface. And look at that. Now taking this cool little cutter, let's cut a little reflective line right into that conical roof. Working our way down the tower. Maybe there's a little window here. Now this is called a crenellated or a battlement type of wall. It has the cool little castle squares and dips. Let's draw that right here on this line. Down, up, down, up. Trying to keep them consistent. Same width and the same size. As you work your way to the side, you can't quite see the whole battlement, but you may be able to see the thickness. Now let's draw the sides of this little tower. The battlement platform here, so let's round that off. Now we've had a cone up top. Now we're drawing what looks like a cylinder. Again to the base, which is cone shaped as well. So we got a cone, cylinder, cylinder, cone. Now let's lay down a soft gray tone for this castle tower. Then we're going to add some really cool rocks on it. Look how I'm swirling, allowing the texture of all this cool paint and parchment effect to work for me now by just swirling the magic wand around all the way down. Now if it runs dry, switch it over to the other side and see if there's any more graphite there. There we go. Now let's add some mountain stones in there by using our dark little TJ's Magic Black and let's add some circular stones and nest them into each other. Small ones, bigger ones, nest them in there. Try not to fall into a pattern like pips on a dice. Change the size, interlock them, blend them down a little bit, blend them down. Same thing here. Bigger stones as I work my way down, maybe they need bigger stones to hold up that big castle tower. In fact, I see a window right there. Just a simple little archway. Allow myself to see just a little thickness of the wall, but I think it's going to be in shadow, so lay down just one quick stroke of gray. Back to the mountain stones. Working right ar around that little window. Over here you may be able to just to see half of a stone. That creates the illusion of curvature into that tower. Bigger stones, bigger, maybe a half one there and there. Little ones in between some of them. All right, now, let's assume since we've got a nice little reflective line on our conical top here, that our light source is coming from the top right, this battlement that extends past the tower is going to cast a shadow. Curve it, curve it, just like that. It's going to cast a rounding shadow. That's a contour shade because I've got a round tower which is going to curve our shadow. If we laid it flat and strictly diagonal, you know what? We'd lose some of our curvature and maybe flatten that drawing out a little bit. Now over here on the dark side of it, take your finger. And with all that cool graphite we've got on there, it's going to shade itself almost. And you will get some graphite on your finger. That's okay. We're going to paint with it here in just a little bit. Now, I've got just a hint of a couple of pine trees over here on a little rocky ridge coming down towards the base of that tower. And I'm just using the side of the number two or the TJ's Magic Black 
zigzagging off the tree trunk, allowing it to be my stem that I'm drawing from. Let it just lay down into that grass. Maybe there's another one there, a smaller one. Maybe it goes right in front of our little castle. And right down behind this little house I've got drawn. There's roof number one. Roof number two. Let's draw the far side of that roof. This wall, this wall, this wall. Look at all my verticals in this drawing are vertical. That's the power of perspective. All vertical lines, unless you're drawing the Leaning Tower of Pisa, must all be true vertical. So this first vertical line that I drew now determines all other true verticals. Well, the towers that are conical shaped are going to tilt inward a little bit, and that's okay. They're still all following a true vertical. Shadow the rest of that little tree back behind the house. Now let's draw the door to the house. Maybe it's open and we can see in like we did the window. Show a little thickness right there. Little window there. Little window there. Now let's draw a little bit of shingle work. Zip, 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 zip. Just following the flow of that old sway back roof. These are old medieval times. Now let's draw some shingles. I'm going to go to the point of a really sharp number two pencil and zip those in there, interlocking them, doing a roll, then jumping in between that roll, going back to the first roll, jumping in between that one, and that's how you draw interlocking mountain stone blocks or shingles on a roof. That quickly. Now, let's shade it. Remember, our light source coming top right. Both of these roofs are going to have shadows. It's okay if some of your little roof and shingle detail disappears. That's what shadows do. This whole side is going to be in shadow. This whole side is going to be in shadow. Look at that, right over. Shadows go right over everything. It's going to be dark up under this part of the roof. It's going to cast a little shadow. Now I've drawn just a little battlement here, like a little tower, square block, castle tower, a very small one. But first, Something's telling me to add a little chimney right there. You know what? I'm going to add a little chimney. That's the creative dreamer. You hear me talk about all the time. The creative dreamer is that spontaneous guy who leads you down a creative idea. When I say follow the dreamer, follow those creative ideas to their conclusion, to completed works of art, because through completed works of art, you become a better artist by compiling finished works. That's what I mean by follow the creative dreamer. Look at that. A little smoke. There's a little action now. Now, obviously, not only is my sun coming in from the right, there's a little breeze blowing in from there, too. Blowing the smoke off and away in that direction. Somebody's inside that cabin. Now, to this little block, another of our geometric shades. Look at my verticals. Boom, boom, boom. Just a hint of one there. I can see the top platform. Now, here's the battlements. They got little squares. Dip, dip, dip to the corner. Dip, dip. Yep, just like that. Little shadow here. Little shadow there. Soften them down with the magic wand. This side's going to be in shadow. And maybe there's a little window here. Let's go to the bigger window. I had two little ones sketched out, but I changed my mind. Let's go to that. That looks cool. Maybe that's a guard tower, or maybe this is a workshop for this guy. Who knows? It's your little world, so you can do whatever you want with it. Let's go back to our little mountain stone effect. Working in circles. Little circles, big circles, nested in circles over here on the sunny side. Look how crisply they show up there. And it just happens to be in a nice little transitional blend of the acrylic paints and the watercolors that I used before. And you can see that it really stands out nicely. The cool thing about parchment is it just gives you that old medieval ancient scroll effect. You know, I just, I just fell in love with it a long time ago as a map drawer and a game designer, and, and I just, you know, I could not do a show without showing you how cool it is to draw an old parchment. Now, back behind this little house and square tower, I've got a big watchtower. Boom, boom, look at that big cone there. 
and it's got a wooden living area or watchtower area up top. Very much like this, but it's not going to be made of stone. It's going to be made of wood. Watch this. Vertical stripes. Vertical stripes. Keep them closed because it's fairly far away. Vertical stripes. We'll draw a window in it in a minute. Vertical stripes. Vertical stripes. Now let's, let's make it look like wood. Now let's add, oh, let's say a, a long horizontal window there. Small one there in the middle. And another horizontal one there. Now let's add a little flattened conical roof. I can see under a little from this perspective. We can actually see up and under that roof a little bit. Maybe there's got a flag up there blowing. Remember our wind? Wind is blowing towards my left. So if I drew the flag in that direction, oh, that wouldn't be right. Follow the wind currents. And we'll draw the flag. Maybe the wind has just kind of torn it and ripped it a little bit. That's cool. I like that. To the roof. Curve. 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 Now, let's add what shingles we can see. Now, they're going to get wider and wider, so I'm going to try to interlock them at the same time. Soften them down. Shadow. Now, light source coming in. This round tower is going to cast a round little shadow. Use my finger, watch. Darken it up just a little bit. Give myself a good dark shadow line. I need that good contrasting shadow line right there. That's what I'm looking for. Darker on this side, darker on this side. Now, I've got a really cool bridge connecting this tower to one over here on the far right. Let me show you how to draw a cool little covered walkway. All the way over. All the way over. Vertical line, just like all of our other verticals. But there's a little bit of a curve there. We can't quite see where it attaches to this far right tower, but we know it does. Now, we've already done wood grain or wood technique. Let's do it again. Zip, 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 zip. Soften it down. Remember, light can't get up and around this side of the walkway, so I can shadow it. Now, here's the cool part. Watch what happens when I try to cast a shadow with this walkway. Drag my finger. That three-dimensional shadow really adds a cool effect using the same law of light. And what graphite I've already got there, it just makes that little tower and that little walkway really cool. That's what shadows do. It looks like that's the most complicated part, but you know what? You just saw it. One little finger stroke, a little bit of blending with the stump, and you've got this really cool three-dimensional shadow going across a round tower. How cool is that? Now, let's plant that tower on a rocky cliff. Oh, maybe it goes down into a deep ravine here. There, there. Just let it fade out. Maybe this goes up just a little bit. And there could be a couple little pine trees like we've drawn over here. Way back up in there. Remember, the further back, the smaller they're going to be. This one's going to be a little closer. So I can get by with a little bit bigger pine tree. And you know what? They're going to cast shadows too. Boom. Boom. All of this is going to cast a little shadow, so let's plant this in the ground. Plant it in the ground. Oh, maybe there's a little, yeah, there's a road. There's a little path going out and off of our drawing, off of the parchment. Let it go out of shot. Shadow the base of it. This whole house is going to cast a little shadow, opposite incoming light. Ooh, nice. This one, too. Now, let's jump the ravine over to this side. And since I'm working on the little cliffs, let's go ahead and continue that. Now, the light may be able to sting a little bit over here and get some of this. And if you want to add some little stingers, just cut it in there with the eraser. But this side, I think, is going to be fairly dark. So I'm going to lay a little bit of extra gray, following the shape of the cliff, darken it. Same here with this little back ridge. It's going to be really dark, and you can see that little patch of shadow. 
Now, here's the last conical tower on the far right. All the way up to a cool point. Now, let's make this what's called thatched or grass type of roof. Now, I like to work in layers. So, there'll be one, two, three. Draw lumps of grass. Follow the shape. Follow the shape. Same here. Another lump of grass. Another lump of grass right there. And shade one side. That easy. That easy to draw a grass type of conical roof. There's no rules, no limits in a medieval castle town, especially in the little castle towns of Tink. I try to draw as many different kind of towers and stones and, and grass roofs, all kinds of stuff to make the castle town interesting. There are no laws when it comes to the town of Tink. And this is a cool little castle like I would draw for the Tink town. Another little ca uh, house here in the foreground. I like to draw these overlapping objects to throw that tower back a little bit. And let's see, I think I can see a door here, maybe. Got to be a way of getting up there. And maybe a vertical window here, another little window next to it. Maybe there's one over there, we just can't see it. But let's cast a shadow. Look at that. Curving it, curving it. Vertically, vertically. See this little white line here? The little light I'm allowing? That is called reflective light. And I'll erase it so you can get a better look. It's here too. Right there. What it is is a round object. Light is able to work its way around just a little bit and reflect off that far edge. Finishing our verticals on the house. Bip, bip, bip. Maybe it's nestled in the grass. The door here. I can see in it. Oh, you can add all kinds of cool little wood textures on the house. Make it look like an old Swiss or German type of building. Little trail coming off of here. Maybe it's going to cast a little shadow down the hill. And you can add a nice little cloud line back there just for another neat layer. Soften it down with a finger. And you have a really cool three-dimensional parchment work of art. I'm going to sign my name to that. Sign your name to your finished work of art. Work on parchment. you got to try it. It is thrilling. Do the paints. Take your time and let it dry. Put it on a wall and do a nice little castle drawing. And be sure to let me see it at themagicofdrawing.com. Let me know you're drawing with me. All across America, people are asking me, TJ, is it okay to trace? Is that right or wrong? Well, the answer is simple. It's a good thing. Tracing improves your eye and hand coordination and makes that pencil do exactly what you want it to do. It trains the movement and helps you become a better artist. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. I am really excited because I'm going to reveal a wonderful secret about pencil drawing that's going to open your eyes to the simplicity of it. Let's go to the drawing board and explore five magic lines. Today, all I'm going to use is a big felt tip marker. Maybe a little bit of pencil at the end, but let me show you how simple these complex pencil drawings that you see on my studio walls and, and on the world record, really how simplistic they really are and how easy it is for you to do the same thing without a lot of practice. Now, every drawing you have ever seen since the dawn of drawing break down into five simple magical shapes. The first of those five is spots. When I say spots, I mean rounding objects filled in solid. They don't, do not have to be perfectly spherical or perfectly round. All of these are classified as spots. Rounding objects filled in solid with pencil or any other medium, it doesn't matter, it could be paint, ink, charcoal, whatever it is. Spots is the very first. The second wonderful magical line is the exact same thing as spots, but do not fill it in. These are called rings. Same lines or any variation of a rounding object that curves back in on itself but is not filled in. That's magical line number two. 
Magical line number three is that, a straight line. On any angle, a straight line. Doesn't get really any easier than that. Now let's go down to here, down to line number four. Wavy lines, and that is any curving non-straight, non-circular black filled in like a spot and a ring that does not connect in on itself, but simple rounding, curving lines. That, in my opinion, is the most common we use as freehand illustrators if we're not using rulers or circle templates to draw spots and rings. Wavy lines are the most common. Now the last of these five magical lines is corners, like a greater than or less than symbol, the letter L, the letter M. Remember when we were kids and drawing, we used to draw lightning like that. Those are corners. Spots, rings, straight lines, wavy lines, and corners are the five simple magical lines, and here's the magic, that constructed and are constructing every single drawing and painting in the world. It is that simple. The only other element to drawing is that gray rainbow of shading dark to light and how gracefully we use that gray rainbow to shade those five magical lines. Let's take a look at what we'll be drawing in our next show. Well, it's storming outside my lighthouse studio, so today I decided to show you how to draw some really cool rain effects over a mountain scene. So let's go to the drawing board and draw some mountain rain right now. Or they won't be able to blend well with the finger when you swirl it around in there to create a very soft layer of mist. Now, here's the cool part. Straight down, straight down. Can you hear my finger snapping? Pow, pow. Just some current, just some ripples in the water. If a storm's coming, maybe this water has got a little ripple. Look at that. Don't change direction. Try to keep that direction exactly the same. Again, cut across it. The more slashing you do, the more graphite you take off, the more rain you're going to have. See you next time. And remember, life is art. So draw something beautiful. So long, everybody. Order a DVD copy of today's show or any of the TJ's Magic of Drawing series, visit TJ's website at magicofdrawing.com.